Okay, well, I'm going to um, talk about reproduction. Um, <laughs> Keep it clean. Yeah. <laughs> Love reproduction. Because um, it turns out that's one of the key ways we separate different plant groups. So we have um, one thing that uh, ferns, mosses, and another group called liverworts all have in common is that they reproduce by the spores. And um, as opposed to flowering plants and cone-bearing plants or pine trees that you might have in your backyard, those are seed plants. So the seed will grow, um, has an embryo and it has nourishment and that will grow um, to a, a mature into a, a new individual. And normally uh, flowers will just produce a handful of seeds and then with spore producing plants, ferns, mosses and little birds. Uh, spores are abundantly produced, really small, they have uh, no nourishment at all and um, they won't, won't grow into a, a, a new mature individual like seeds do. They actually are sort of another stage in the life cycle and are a reproducing cell. So for instance, if you want to uh, zoom in up here, in different plant groups, well, ferns, mosses, and liverworts, they house their, their spores in different places in the plant. So if you've got to come and zoom right in and here, and you see all these brown streaks. It looks like um, someone's painted on with a brush or, or dust. So that, that's where the spores are, and that, that's called sporangia, or spore house. Now, um, so in ferns, the spores are on the underside of the leaves, right? And then in uh, mosses and liverworts, I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but if you zoom in nice and closely there, Monica, you'll be able to see um, this, you've got this green plant here, and then this little um, stalk, and at the top is this little capsule, and that's where the spores are in mosses and liverworts. And that whole structure is called a sporophyte. Now one really cool thing that, um, that I love about these spore producing plants, with the um, ferns, you have, um, or I need to sort of step back, but you have this concept called alternation of generations. And so there are actually two different phases to the plant life cycle. So what happens is in ferns, they, um, they've got the spores on the underside and they'll actually um, disperse and they'll germinate into this tiny little microscopic structure, it's almost heart shaped, called a gametophyte. And that's where the um, male bits and pieces are and the female bits and pieces. And then um, you'll have the um, male reproducing cells the female reproducing cells and it needs water for fertilization so the male actually produces motile um, sperm that will fertilize the egg. It needs um, water as a medium to travel through. So what happens is you get um, the, the male fertilizes the, um, the, the female egg and it produces a little bit like a, a seedling that grows into this fern. Then we have, um, that's in contrast to mosses and liverworts, where if we can zoom back in on the structure. Now I said in ferns, you have um, this green phase is totally separate from the, the other reproducing phase, that tiny microscopic heart shaped. Well, in mosses and liverworts, You've got the sporophyte um, and the gametophyte, and that's, this is actually partially um, parasitic, or sort of partially feeding off this. And then the spores are going to um, disperse, and there's actually little teeth in there that open up when it dries out and disperses the spores. And it's those spores that are going to, um, one's going to grow into a female plant, one's going to grow into a male plant, and then with uh, water as a medium, 
the reproducing cells from the male plant will fertilize the female plant and then grow into um, this uh, gametophyte and then the whole cycle continues. Now that's something in common between mosses and liverworts. One thing that um, there's a, several features that differentiate mosses from liverworts. One is this capsule that I was talking about. Sorry, you're doing a lot yeah. of zooming in and out here. Because these are really small plants. But this capsule I'm talking about, in mosses, it stays around for a long time. Uh, weeks, months, um, for several months. Whereas in liverworts, this is an ephemeral structure. It'll, it'll last for a, a few days and then disappear. Then another real key difference, they're all microscopic features which differentiate these plants because they're so small. In mosses, they have like a, a, a midrib or a vein in the leaf. Liverworts, no such structure at all. One final really neat um, differentiating feature between mosses and liverworts, this is a cellular, if you want to zoom in on here, it's a cellular component. Liverworts contain these structures called oil bodies. And that's inside the cell of the leaf of this plant. And they don't exist in any other plant group at all. So they're unique to liverworts. Um, I could keep talking forever. <laughs> inside the, these oil bodies, there's some really neat structures, chemical compounds, and that's what we've got illustrated here. So all of these are, are, are various um, chemical compounds. Would they be similar to like steroids or? Exactly, yeah. There's, yep, there's um, phenols and terpenoids. Um, and some of these have really interesting biological properties. So uh, my colleagues and I are collaborating with a lab in Japan, actually, where we're investigating the biological properties of these um, chemical compounds extracted from these oil bodies. By biological properties, I mean um, where the chemical compounds have some sort of activity against um, cancer cells, or HIV, or mm -hmm. um, fungi, um, fungi and algae that are both components of lichens. So um, these chemicals can actually destroy them, and so they can be have vast potential for uh, uh, drugs and pharmaceuticals and, and 